back. This is John. Hey, it's Paul. And this is What If Geeks. And it's only us tonight. Uh, after many attempts to get Audacity working, something's wrong there. So we're on GarageBand tonight. So hopefully... Do we sound, sound different? Right. We're a garage <laughs> band. Not. Always wanted to be a garage band. <laughs> well, ta-da. Um, yeah, I don't know what the hell happened. Uh, Eric and I tweaked the sound last week. It was great. And then I turned it on tonight and it just didn't want to work <laughs> like, not at all it's like not recording it's just running so whatever so the garage band is working for now so we shall see we're doing it over here well, right. we are going to be hanging out in the garage well we're, we are always. literally in a garage anyway. yeah we're in a garage in a garage band so there all right so today is what uh february 4th yep tuesday and we're uh a few days sh- uh, away from uh, away from after the super bowl so the big game or whatever. I know. Last what year we what just are you said, to fuck say? it. Yeah. What are you allowed <laughs> to say? <laughs> By the time they find us, <laughs> whatever. I think as long as you're not advertising it, you can say Super Bowl because that's what it is. Yeah. But like you can't say it, you know, in yeah. your commercial. Or something right. Like right. Yeah. You have to say the big game. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So we figured we'd do the uh, well, same as we did last year, kind of go over some of the commercials, kind of go over some of like the, the best commercials and kind of tie it into the website. Mm-hmm. Eric offered to take – whatever we vote on for the best commercials of all time for Super Bowl and kind of throw them up on the website okay. like later on. Uh, Ray is working, and Eric is also working, but Eric is working in another country right now. <laughs> so he'll be back in about a week or so. Jerk. Uh, have fun over there. <laughs> so that's that. All right, let's get into this shit. Um, we can talk about the game real quick. It was the Chiefs versus the 49ers. Yeah. What Chief, did you think? The- it was an amazing game, uh, kind of slow in the first half, uh, picked up in the second, and really in the last, I don't know, probably 10 minutes 10 of the game. 10 minutes of the game, yeah. yeah. Which um, is actually what the Chiefs were doing the entire playoff set, yeah. se- series, really. And when we went into it, I said I w- wanted to see the Chiefs make it, just because it's been 50 years, but I had, I don't, I'm not a better at all. But if I had been, I would have been betting on the 49ers, just because they were looking really good. Right. And yeah, they, they came back. I was like, "Wow, that was really cool." Yeah. So we uh, we also had a um, a neighborhood chili cook off thing over at Eric's house. Uh, so we combined that with the soup bowl, and I told him he was kind of out of his mind because, like, you know, five six pots of chili, a bunch of beer, I'm like, you know, we're gonna have the fire department here <laughs> looking for a methane <laughs> leak right. real quick. So, but it was good. It was a lot. It was a good time. Pipes at his house still work. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shit is full, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so with uh, and uh, ultimately, as you as y'all probably know, 49ers won, making the entire well, state. Forty Niners lost. What did I say? <laughs> you totally geeked it. You said the Forty Niners won. Oh yeah, I meant I meant the Chiefs won. I had a joke and everything, and I blew it. the The Chiefs won, making the entire state of Kansas super happy, and President <laughs> Trump. And I just stepped on the whole thing and shit my shit Way to my walk shit my mess get on that one. Yeah, um, I mean, we we can try it again. <laughs> that's fine. But why will we? And. Um, so yeah, everyone in the state of Kansas super happy and uh, hysterical uh, tweets oh my and God. memes and everything else. All right. So yeah, as um, you know, we we know we don't do the whole politics thing, but I was like, uh, I didn't. I don't think I sent it to you, but I sent it to a bunch of my friends. Uh, I had a a picture of the state of Missouri, and it had. Kansas written over it in marker. Mm-hmm. I said, there, I helped fix it in a way that the president would like. Yeah, I've seen that. Because of that uh, hurricane thing yep. he did. I was like, yeah, that was pretty fucking funny. That is hysterical. I'm like, look, mm-hmm. not, not I'm just here for me. I'm just here for memes. And yeah. Yeah. Dude, 50 states. Yeah. That's all we got. Yeah. <laughs> there technically is a Kansas City, Kansas. There is. Uh, there is. I will give but, him that. But the Chiefs actually played Missouri. Yeah. Um, okay, so without... And Eric has always made us an amazing list. Thank you, Eric, of of all the commercials and all the um, movie trailers and everything else. But without looking at the list, yep. What was your favorite? And by favorite, we'll go sort of most memorable and the and the commercial you thought was the best. Um, without the list, uh, I like that Jeep one that was the uh, redo of Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Yeah, I thought that was really funny. Uh, Again, it made me kind of want a Jeep truck. I thought, yeah, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it was just a good commercial. Yeah, uh, Bill Murray's kind of got, I don't know, uh, it, with Ghostbusters coming out and 
the whole Zombie Land two that just came out and all this. Other, you know, is he's kind of got like a little bit of a not. A, I wouldn't say resurgence because he never really went anywhere. Yeah, he's just always kind of been there. He's not even like an ebb and flow kind of thing. You know, he's just there. You know, he's Bill Murray. But um, I thought it was pretty good. I yeah. liked it. Uh, for me, it was the TurboTax commercial with the people dancing. Yep. Because um, at first you're like, what is this going to be for? And then you realize, all right, it's TurboTax commercial. Like, oh, that's pretty entertaining. Um, that's the one my kids thought was the funniest. Yeah. Um, the Tide commercial that kept going. And then he got himself into the Bud Light commercial. He got himself into the Wonder Woman trailer. Yes. He got himself into a couple other things. Uh, Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, um, that was pretty good. That guy's hysterical, and that was a good spot. Yeah, I liked it. Um, trying to think what else was there. Uh, of course, you know, we can get in trailers here in a second, or we can jump right into them and then go through the commercials later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's do that, yeah. because then we can kind of pick a couple other commercials and then kind of roll into, like, the our favorites from the past. Yeah. All right, so mm-hmm. the, the trailers, um, first, let's just jump right into Sonic. Um, did you get a chance to sit down and watch any of these yeah i've seen them all okay um sonic looks better it looks better um i'm still they i'm glad they went back and i think we said this the last time we talked about this trailer i'm glad they went back and fixed sonic yes they need to go back and fix jim carrey who's going to be jim carrey <laughs> in that movie he is he's totally jim carrey in and, that movie. and that's going to be I, even the nut tap or whatever that happened yeah. in that trailer i was just like really he's like left so open uh, i don't know uh, yeah you know <laughs> It is what it is, I guess. I I can't imagine that I'm going to see this. Uh, I'm going to have to because Noah's going to want to see it because <clears> he loves like Mario and Sonic and all those characters. So yeah. he funny because he never really went back and played any of the old school Sonic games, but he just loves Sonic the Hedgehog. There's something about Sonic the Hedgehog, I guess, the way he initially looked mm-hmm. because I think or like in the games and shit. I guess it was even like the cartoon he watched that for like five minutes. Um, I think even when the first trailer came out for this movie, even he was like, Ew. <laughs> like what the hell? Right. That's, not, that's not Sonic. So, when you creep out my eight-year-old with a, your pedophile-looking hedgehog, <coughs> you, got a, right. you got a problem. So, yeah. But I think he wants to see it, so we'll probably want to go and see it, I guess. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Invisible Man. This looks like Hollow Man all over again. Yep. Uh, the Kevin Bacon thing from, oh, I forget. 90s? Probably. Sure. <laughs> Eric's not here. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's not that important. It's a Kevin Bacon one. It's kind of a creepy thing where some dude is able to turn invisible and he's a straight up sociopath after a while. Um, this looks like it's going to be a straight up horror movie. Yep. So it looks cool. I mean, I'll watch it. I don't know that I'll go see it in the theater, but I might wait for it to come out on DVD. How about you? Yeah, it's it's an interesting take. Uh, 2000, Hollow Man. No. Okay. Um, I guess I was going to say late 90s. Um, <clears throat> that he uses the power for just sort of totally creeping out his wife. and Yeah, uh, yeah. Like totally domineering every part of her life. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It looks good. I, I mean, well, again, trailers. It was, um, it was one of the trailers. So Gail and I saw 1917. <clears throat> last week oh did you yeah have you seen that yet no oh that's an amazing movie okay cool yeah and uh it was one of the trailers for the movie and and it looks good i don't know she's never gonna see it um so it's gonna be one of those that i i have to find time to watch yeah, um, maybe we'll stream it or yeah if it starts to get really good reviews maybe the three of us will go watch it yeah. i don't know uh all right yeah so what else what we got uh quiet place part two um, I still haven't seen part one. Oh yeah, you see, you see, you see what uh, some of my notes. Yeah, mild yeah. confession, I have not mm. seen part one either. Yeah. And I'm the horror movie guy in this damn podcast, so yeah, I'm really failing. But uh, I do want to see part one, so I guess I'll have to watch that this weekend. And uh, yeah, it, this looks good. I mean, the, the entire concept looks really cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to a movie, a, a sequel to a movie I haven't seen yet. <laughs> uh, the final Mulan trailer. Uh, it's right before my birthday, so yay me. <laughs> I'm more interested in this movie. Um, I, I'm a little bit tired of the Disney, you know, live live action translations. 
Um, oh, that's a good one. But but this one, I think, because it's not a – doesn't look like a shot-for-shot shot remake, no music, no Mushu, um, none of those things. Yeah. I, this feels more like a epic kind of martial arts battle movie, Yeah, and, and I'm here it, for that. It definitely gave mm-hmm. me uh, Crouching Tiger – Hidden Mushu thing, yeah. I, I think I made that joke last time, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm I'm all for this one. Uh, same as you though. I am kind of getting tired of the. I'm kind of like I'm both sides of the coin. I'm tired of them, but when I see them, I'm like, oh, I see. You know, it looks cool what they did. Yeah. You know, so I'm still fascinated by what they can do, but I'm like, God, you Disney, can't you just make some new shit? Right, make something new. Yeah, come on. You're very talented. We people. will Make get into new. some new shit from Disney here in a little bit. Um, yeah. So what else? Uh, James Bond, new James Bond, No Time to Die. Um, I, yeah, I guess. I've, uh, uh, second confession of the night. I, I feel like I'm back in Catholic school when I was a kid. <laughs> <sighs> Don't touch me. Forgive, <laughs> forgive me, Father. I said. Yeah. Um, Don't put your hand I, there. <laughs> Do I have to be on my knees all the time? <laughs> all right, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is the saltiest <laughs> communion way forever. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. I was about that's to be terrible. like, are you sure you can hear my confession? <laughs> Damn. Sorry. Uh, I might have shit for my therapist later. Uh, I haven't seen any James Bond movies. Never? No. Wow. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, I've been faking it. I feel like, um, I feel like there's a time. Much like my wife. <laughs> I feel like you, you missed an opportunity there too. <laughs> um, I feel like there's a time when, because there wasn't a ton of action movies, Bond films really were something special. Um, yes, they were. Right? And, I just... <laughs> and, and now... Every third movie is an action movie. And so yeah. really, what's the huge deal? Um, yes. There's a couple things in um, the Pierce Brosnan Bonds were good because um, I always thought he should be James Bond. Um, and then when they made Daniel Craig, I think the first one with Daniel Craig, um, there's a <clears throat> very cool parkour chase scene that feels like one continuous shot. Um, right. That's really cool, but but there are so many action movies, and you know the Bourne series and everything else. Like a, a spy yes. action movie is not that special anymore. Yeah, and for me, mm-hmm. by the time like I always knew James Bond was out there because I mean, duh. But growing up, nobody in my family was really into it, so I never really got exposed to it. Then, uh, by the time I could even remotely think that I might have had an interest in it. I was like, oh, yeah, I might see that. Like you said, all these yeah. Jason Bourne and this one and that one, whatever, yeah. Taken, blah, blah, blah. So I just never got into it. Right. I'm sure at some point when I have a little bit more free time, I'll start watching some classics or whatever, you know. Yeah, the Roger Moore ones are – it's interesting because you're looking at them and you're like, you, you can't do – what are you, 50, 60? Right. How old are you? Like, you're really going to pull that off? Yeah. Like I want to go back and watch uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, you know? he was good. Yeah. So, uh, Black Widow. Yes. Yes, please. Yes. <clears throat> that's all. I, yeah. Yeah. Take my money. I think that's like all my notes, right? Take yes, my money please. now. Yeah. The two of them. I'm ready. Anyway. All right. Fast and the Furious Nine. Okay. I, I left it two. So I'm. I there's been seven Fast and Furious movies and a Hobbs and Shaw yeah. spinoff. All right. <clears throat> I know that I am like the only holdout in this camp. For these movies, as far as this podcast goes, uh, mostly because Noah took an interest in them not so long ago and watched like every one of them. Uh, still, I like to be able to shut my brain off and watch and do whatever, right? But here, spoiler alert: if you haven't seen this, I know we're gonna have a whole bunch of links on the uh, the Facebook page and the website, so go check out all these trailers before you listen. Or well, pause this about three minutes ago and <laughs> then start watching them and come back. Um, all right, so you got Dominic Toretto and uh, Letty, right? They're talking to his kid. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I'm always about Michelle Rodriguez. I mean, I don't care if she doesn't play for my team. I, she's just gorgeous. Um, they talk to his kid about something's going to happen, you know, so 
then they get like the trail just runs a mile a minute now and that you see um i guess wwe flavor of the week for this series is going to be john cena right you know they had to get you know get uh, the rock replaced because he went and did his own spinoff and i'm not buying all of the beef between him and vin diesel i think it might have been between him and some of the other guys on that set but there was some heat there in the like the last one they did together Basically, he was just talking shit to him about their work ethic, right? You know, online. I think you remember that, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So, I don't buy all of that. I think some of it was kind of staged, but um, uh, yeah, you got John Cena now, who, again, anytime you see a wrestler coming in to act, you're like, is this going to be Hulk Hogan right. <laughs> or is this going to be The Rock? And Cena's actually starting to like he he's really grown on me in the last few roles he's taken. He was freaking hilarious in that Cockblockers movie. I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, that's basically him and a couple of the parents trying yeah. to block their kids from having sex. Yeah. That's funny as shit. Um, he's growing on me as far as an actor goes. So I'll give him a pass going into this just to see how he does. Because, uh, I mean, it's action, so he should be okay. He, he's been in a few action movies that were made by WWE Films. So, and he was passable in them so you should be all right here yeah. uh yeah spoiler alert apparently dom's got a brother <laughs> <laughs> for a guy does. who's been talking about family for nine goddamn movies you haven't heard a peep out of his brother really mm-hmm. okay right. the only thing uh, so yeah apparently he's like all about trying to kill dom right so there's this whole thing there so two big things that came out of this trailer one and it's a very quick snippet but that was Helen Mirren. And is she playing his mother? I don't know. Because she's in a car, in a sports car, looking like she knows how to handle it. And she's talking about something about family, right? right? I'm like, if she's playing like Mrs. Toretto, I am all in now. <laughs> like, really? I love that woman. Um, and then, two, at the very end of this trailer, you see Han, who died like four movies ago. Spoiler alert. I know you don't care. Uh, which was actually a huge internet thing because Shaw of Hobbs and Shaw fame, um, what's his face, Jason Statham, Statham. Yep. he <clears throat> killed him, right? Retroactively somehow they worked in where he killed him so he was going to be the big bad for Fast and Furious or whatever the hell it was. And then he turned good to help Toretto and the team in the next one. I'm confused now. <laughs> you fast and furious my brain so everyone was like well what about justice for Han because he killed the guy you know and he's part of the team and blah 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 and you just forget about that well apparently the dude's fucking alive so how is he alive so between him being alive after he supposedly got blowed up uh, and everyone jumping out of windows for five stories and whatever else they're doing right I think you're going to find out that Whatever that nanotechnology shit that Idris Elba had in Hobbs and Shaw, mm-hmm. I think they all got it now. They're just all fucking superheroes. They're all superheroes. Yeah, right. fuck it. They're all mutants. Yeah. This, is, this is how we introduce mutants into That's the MCU. Right. It's going to be through Fast and Furious. That's hysterical. You guys thought it was going to be Scarlet Witch, you see? <laughs> it is not. So, yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what to make of this. I mean, I do. It's just shut your brain off. But even though this one, it may have literally jumped a shark at some point for me in this trailer. So... I'll go watch it because Noah wants to go watch it and just because I want to see what the fuck is going on. But, yeah, I'm kind of 50-50 on this one. I know you didn't care at all. <laughs> that was a lot of talk for something that I'm the only one that cares about. Uh, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I'm torn about this movie. Here's okay. the thing. And, and I think we talked about this last time. We did. <clears throat> this should have been made in 1993. Yes. <clears throat> this... Um, when was it, the first one made? I forget. I think we said it was 86? Go ahead. Something like that? You keep, you keep talking. <clears throat> this should have been made five years after the first one, not 25 years after the first one, or 30, whatever number of years we are. <clears throat> um, Maverick is... Uh, Tom Cruise is older now than... 86. Yeah. <clears throat> Tom Cruise is older now than Wilford Brimley, the diabetes... Got diabetes. diabetes. It was when he made Cocoon. And 
and he seemed like an old codger in that movie. And so the idea that, that Maverick's still flying um, and doing all this stuff is a little ridiculous. It, it seems a, a, a reboot sort of wrapped in a sequel. Um, and I'm going to end up seeing it because it's going to be a huge movie. And for the nostalgia parts of it, yep. I will probably end up seeing it. Um, my wife will want to see it, and so I will probably end up seeing it. And it it might be okay. Um, it looks like it'll be all right. There, um, all right for me. Just co- just coming from someone who spent twenty years in the military, okay, in the Navy. So I I've been on the shit that he was flying off of in the last one. Uh, he started whatever year they want to say this is. In 86, he started that, he joined Top Gun and did whatever, right? So he mm-hmm. started his career in 86. That was eight years before I started my Navy career. I've been retired for five fucking years. Right. And this guy's still flying around. I'm, I know I'm bad at math, but that's like that's impressive. I know you can have really, really long careers, but no. <laughs> no I'm sorry. Yeah. Not that guy. Uh, something's just not right there. But now, that aside, you know, just taking realism out of it, I've said before, I said in my notes, I can't stand Tom Cruise as a person. I can't. I, we talked about yep. his treatment of sailors on ships. Just, he's just, he's a Scientologist. He's a, he's a dick. Uh, outside of that, I love his fucking movies. So, again, I always have to try to separate actor from yep. person, you know. Uh, or from the role, whatever, and just enjoy the movie. And that being said, this looks good. And there is a quick thing in this trailer where you hear somebody, or, all right, I'll go this way. The first trailer, I said, huh, because I didn't bother rewinding it to go check it out. I watched it a couple times, and both times I was, oh, shit. It looks like there's one of these newer pilots. looks like he could be a younger version of Goose, right? right? Who, <clears throat> spoiler alert, <laughs> 30 fucking years ago, <laughs> yeah. he died. And that was his, uh, his co-pilot. In this trailer, you hear someone say, my father trusted you. I'm not going to make that same mistake. Or yeah. Something to that effect, right? I wrote it down. Uh, I, I, ironically, I wrote it down in my, in my notes, and then I didn't print them, and Paul did, so... He's got my notes. <laughs> oh, so, <okay. laughs> yeah, it's all good. It's, it's cool. Whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, I think I'm right there. It's going to be like he's coming back to train Goose's yeah. kid. That would be an interesting twist. Yeah. So, so again, it would be cool. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm in for it 80%. That means that Goose's kid would be... At least in his early 30s, because the movie was in 86. Meg Ryan, who played Goose's wife, wasn't pregnant that I'm aware of. Um, she may have gotten pregnant when, you know, she shows up oh, and they're on leave. Did, did he pull an Apollo mm-hmm. Creed and have an illegitimate bastard kid with somebody else? And now uh, Maverick's going to pull a Rocky and come may- trade maybe. Adonis Goose? Maybe, <laughs> right. <laughs> um and so they they could do you know that that Meg Ryan never mentioned she was pregnant, um, but would put him not as a young pilot, but he would be thirty something years old. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So maybe the believability here is not going to fudge, yeah. fudge the numbers on the the time frame. Uh, and finally, what had me lit that night. Disney Plus dropped a huge spot and barely showed you anything, yep. like they always do, but got everybody talking. Yep. And it's a, it's basically just a quick little glimpse of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and then a very quick snippet of Loki at the end. It's very quick cutscenes, yeah. but it all looks awesome. It's all just Sam uh, throwing Cap's shield. Yep. Uh, WandaVision doing what looks like sort of retro sitcoms almost it it looks like she <clears throat> here's the thing all right because we know in the comics wanda's out of her mind through like many runs right she, she does it a lot right her breaks with reality are fucked up where she created kids yep. at one point right i think that's what this is going to be yep. 
and that's why it's leading into uh, Doctor Strange and the multi- Multiverse of Madness. I think something's going to happen there where her power is going to be going out of control more and more. Right. And then, yeah, because it looked like she literally glitched from one reality to another, mm-hmm. like from the TV to the – it was weird. Yeah. But it looked cool as shit. Yep. So I was like, all right, so I'm all for that. And a very quick shot of Loki. Very quick. And he's been, I forget what he said exactly, but he's just like, I'm going to burn it all to the ground yep. or some shit like that. And I was like, sweet. Yeah. Here it comes. And that got the biggest cool pop stuff. at the house I was in. When we were over at Eric's house. Right. That got the biggest pop of all. It was like, as soon as you saw Loki, everybody was like, yes. <laughs> so, all right. Um, that's all the trailers. Uh, I guess we should get this part out of the way, huh? Should we talk halftime show? Look, the only thing I got to say is, Shakira, what's that tongue do? So, <laughs> so Cause, damn. There's a lot of back and forth on Facebook, on social media, about... Was it good? Was it empowering? Is it too much? Is the it Susans and Karens are going to be coming for us? You know that, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it is it okay for you know for for our girls to see women do that? Is it is it empowering? Is it not? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to watch it four or five more times, probably in slow mo, <laughs> and and sort of come to a decision. So I'm still out. So we were on uh, Eric's back. Mm-hmm. patio and we watch it on the TV outside and it was uh, me and two two of our friends and my one friend was standing on my left his daughter was out there she's like 10, 11, whatever she's watching she, like, she doesn't even really know who Shakira is or she couldn't she didn't recognize her or whatever she's just kind of looking like meanwhile the three of us are all sitting there staring at the TV like uh wow yeah you know and <laughs> finally she kind of like it was a full three or four minutes, and then she just kind of like she makes a couple of comments about whatever on the TV screen, and she's like, eh, "All right, whatever," and she goes inside. And I leaned over to my buddy, and I was like, "Dude, shit was getting really awkward with your daughter here." I was about, I was like, "I didn't know how to like, you you, you might gotta go, <laughs> go find Noah, go hang yeah. out, go." <laughs> so I was here's twenty bucks. <laughs> we got home. Um, we got home just as the game was starting, uh, and we. We threw some dinner together, and I was actually doing the dishes during the halftime show. And I look up, and Shakira is on the screen, and my daughter, who's five, who takes a dance class, is standing there with her hand on her hips, and she's watching Shakira, and then she starts kind of wiggling her hips back and forth, and I'm like... You're like, no! Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I'm not sure about this. John, get a shot, But only because of the, like... That's not how I would want my daughter to dance, right. um, but but, how you want every other woman in the world but, but yeah, how I want to see the rest of them dance. Um, so I guess that's I, I don't know what that makes me, just a regular guy, I suppose. Yeah. Um, my wife was outraged. My not outraged. My wife was like, like that's not. Um, I wouldn't call that empowering. Is my wife's thoughts were like, that's. Is that what we want our daughters to see at the halftime show? And I'm like, no, I kind of get it. Um, I don't know. So, but but there's a there's a massive back and forth on it. Yeah, and I know a lot of the the way they were dancing is like you know the Latin culture and whatever. Yeah, and I'm fine. And again, uh, from a guy standpoint, you know, hey, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I get both sides of it, but <laughs> my favorite meme was uh, it said. Mom's 2019, and it had Adam Levine mm-hmm. with his shirt off and his pants yeah. all the way down. It was Dick, yeah, right. And all the moms are like, oh. yeah. And then Mom's 2020, it shows Shakira and Jay and they're, and they're like, motherfucker, yeah, yeah. So come on. The yeah. other, the other meme I like was um, there's one shot of uh, Blanche from Golden Girls. And the other shot is J-Lo, and it said 50 in 1987, and it's Blanche, and it's 50. J-Lo is 50, yeah. and she's, like, hanging from the pole with no hands. Yeah. Um, All right. I was impressed when Shakira walked out, because I'm like, this girl just turned 43. She's two years younger than I am. She looks like she's 20 years younger than I am. Yep. That's probably more of a reflection <clears throat> on myself, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how well, I take care of myself. When you... But holy shit, she looked amazing. Yeah. And J-Lo at 50 looks awesome. And then, yeah, and then J-Lo comes out, and I'm like... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, so, look, Super Bowl's in Miami. It's got a very Latin flavor to it. 
when you book yeah. Shakira and JLo, that's what you're going to get. And yeah, the, so none of it was like correct. None of it, I no wasn't surprised. Be surprised. By yeah, and and again, I'm going to watch it five or ten more times oh, just to that, sort of. I did see this one other meme that I had to show you that apparently oh, yeah. she dressed just like her <laughs> Zootopia character. Yeah, that's amazing. That I'm, awesome. I'm going to post that on the friggin' uh, website. But yeah, I mean, I liked it. Um, there were all kinds of weird memes going around. Um, I don't know. I was impressed with it. I mean, Shakira came sliding in toward the camera at that one point with her, you know, right on her knees, mm -hmm. and that camera tried to get as far up there as he could. Yeah. I've never wanted another wardrobe malfunction more <laughs> in my life. <laughs> yeah. Please, come on. <laughs> what is holding that thing together? Right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so, hey, look, whatever. I was fine with it. Of course. Duh. I think we all know by everything else I've said in this podcast for the last year. <laughs> we know I'm good with it. Yeah. All right. So down to the commercials. Uh, we already went over my, uh, well, my favorite one, the Jeep one. Uh, it was basically, it was kind of a, a callback to, no kind of, it was a callback to Bill Murray and Groundhog Day. Yeah. It, I mean, it starts off right with the clock, turns to six, and they start playing Sunny in the Air, and he gets up out of the bed, and it's, well, it's old Bill Murray, and he's just like, oh, no. Yeah. And he's there again. Uh, they got what's his face Ned to come back and reprise his role. He's like Phil, needle nose Ned, Ned yeah. the head. And uh, so he uh, basically it's, it's a commercial for a Jeep truck. Um, Bill Murray's character sees the Jeep and keeps stealing Pucks and Tony Phil and jumping in the Jeep and going on adventures with him. Yeah, and it's just it's classic Bill Murray shit. And it's funny as hell, so I liked it. Um, so. <laughs> In, instead we can of, skip half of these two. Yeah, whatever you want to skip. So here's here's what I do. There's a couple that I thought um, I know because of the death of Kobe Bryant that planners had had this idea in their minds that they had announced like a couple weeks ago that Mr. Peanut had died. Yes, and they were leading up to the funeral was going to be one of the spots in the Super Bowl. Well, the first commercial shows him dying, and then. But because of Kobe's death, they decided to pull the actual funeral commercial. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's, there's only a snippet of it in that. Yes. Right, and then they and then they start like sort of the so the spot with Baby Nut um, <laughs> goes. I guess end of funeral. There there must have been pre sort of funeral. So it goes end of funeral into sort of the rebirth of Baby yes. Peanut. Yeah, and if you look at my notes, I literally went from death of Mr. Peanut to, oh, wow, they really did that, to baby nut. Well, that didn't last long. Yeah. <laughs> He's back. And it was it was a really weird commercial. It was amusing because you had Mr. Clean and the Kool-Aid Man and yeah. blah, 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 and whoever. There were some other ones in there. I think the guy from GoDaddy was in there. You know, uh, Kool-Aid starts crying, and then... The Kool-Aid pours the Kool out? Yeah, he, pour, yeah, he spills his Kool-Aid with his, his Kool-Aid tears... Right. Make a little bean sprout, and here comes Mr. Peanut. And they pick him up, and he makes dolphin noises. Yeah. And I was like, what in the fuck is going on? <laughs> and he goes, no, I'm kidding. I'm back. Yeah. And where's my monocle? I'm like, what the, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Huh? All I can say is, one, I, I get it. They kind of skipped over everything they planned on doing because of the death of Kobe Bryant. And I guess good on him. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, I get it. Uh I me I wouldn't have associated the two really, but fine. Two in today's day and age, with um, I guess the collective IQ of most of the country, never mind outside of this country. How many fucking idiots are going to start pouring Kool Aid over peanuts just to see what the fuck <laughs> happens? Right. You know it's going to happen. It's going to yeah. be it's going to be one of these goddamn challenges on YouTube, right. the Kool Aid Planners Challenge. Oh, God, you know what? Yes, please do it. Now choke on the fucking peanuts. <laughs> oh. Mr. Peanut feels like... Make a dolphin noise as you're choking. <laughs> Mr. Peanut feels like a, a, a spokes character or something that's like two eras ago. Not just the last era. He wears two a top hat ago. and a fucking monocle. Right. Of course like, he is. Who's yeah. into that? And and so I guess they're trying to to bring that character back somehow, but that commercial felt like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. And like, the fact that everyone's going to run around calling him Baby Nut. Yeah. Ooh. I saw a meme. My favorite meme out of all this was someone who had the picture of Baby Nut 
Baby Groot and Baby Yoda. And it said, I would roast Baby Peanut over the with the corpse of Baby, of Groot. Baby Groot just to give sustenance to Baby Yoda. I'm going to find that and post <laughs> it. That's amazing. Hey, we can post memes now. Yeah, awesome. So, there you go. Um, yeah, we can skip over the, all those other ones. Uh, I thought the Walmart. That. I thought the Walmart commercial was cool. The Walmart one with all the you know, space stuff. Um, it had the uh, Enterprise. It had. Um, oh yeah, that one was pretty cool. All the space stuff. Yeah, that was awesome. There was another Walmart one that was in there that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rocket Man one. Yeah, but um, the one that he's got the link to was uh, kind of like how they're coming together throughout the neighborhood. Thing, and it's playing Rocket Man in the background. That's that one, and it was like it was actually really touching. Yeah, it was, no. I didn't think of Walmart. I mean, Walmart is right down the street. I mean, you, you know Walmart, but I don't see Walmart that way. You always make fun of Walmart. That that commercial actually had me like, eh, yeah, you know what? I mean, I do like Walmart. Yeah. They, you know, and they just did like they did a really good job of like, no, you know, where everyone see uh, what they said. Yeah, they said something like. Um, where everyone sees, you know, these United States, we see these United towns, yeah. these United, you know, and it was like, wow, okay, cool, you know, it was cool. Go ahead. Um, the Bud Light commercial with Post Malone with the guys that look like Post Malone that are sort of controlling his body, that was pretty funny. That was funny, yeah. Um, that was like straight up inside out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the Patriot commercial I wrote something down for, I forget. The Old Town Road one was interesting. Uh-huh. That was all right. I like the Rick and Morty Pringles commercial. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, okay, the Jimmy Fallon working out one for Michelob with uh, John Cena. Yeah. Right? I saw two different ads from two different websites saying, like, best Super Bowl commercial ever. And I watched it, and I was like, that was the only commercial I watched prior to the Super Bowl because it was online. I mean, all the others were too, but I stayed away from them. It was it was all right. It yeah. wasn't great. I, mean, I was like, all right, whatever. So, I think people are out of your fucking minds. Uh, go ahead. Um, I liked, like I said, I liked Rick and Morty. Um, TurboTax was my favorite. Uh, the Quibi thing, I was like, what the hell is that? Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what the fuck Quibi is. I, I mean, I know uh, now because yeah. Eric wrote it down for us. But <laughs> thanks, <again>, Eric. <laughs> thanks, Eric. Um, you helped. It's but but I'm not getting a new. I'm not getting another streaming service. I'm not streaming 10-minute videos. Um, it sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm just not doing it. No. Um, let's see. I was, of course, like the, what do you call it, um, the Katie Sowers spot about, you know, Microsoft. That's been on for a little while. Though. Yeah. I've seen that. But I, good on her. I'm proud of her. That's for, a, you know, that's a cool there. commercial. Um, and way to show, way to spotlight somebody who worked hard to get what she was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and it's and, cool where she's like, I don't want to be the best Female coach. I just want yeah. to be the best coach. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's cool. She did good. Uh, let me see. Oh, the Snickers 2020 Fix-It commercial? Way to call out society <laughs> on every, all the bullshit. Right. I was like, you know what? I, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm not the biggest Snickers fan, but damn, okay. Yeah, we're good. Uh, let me see. Oh, the. let me know if you have any other ones because then i got a funny story for you. I'm go ahead. Okay, yeah. All the, all the other ones were pretty cool. The last one I want to talk about, and we're going to take a quick break. Uh, Google helps old man remember his late wife. Very touching. Yeah. Right? However, <laughs> and I'm so mad that Eric's not here for this. We were out on his patio, right? And we're watching this touching commercial about, basically it's uh, an old man with Alzheimer's, whatever, and Google Home is, he's telling it to remember this, remember that, remind me, so that he'll not forget his late wife. And as he's saying, Google, remember this. Google, remember that. <laughs> Eric's fucking TV is trying to do what the guy says. <laughs> <laughs> it took like three times of this happening as we were watching this commercial. Finally, my neighbor leans over and goes, wait, is that his TV? And I said, yeah. Yeah, it is. It made this weird fucking surreal moment where I was just like, I can't write this That's shit. Funny. <laughs> That's amazing. funny. It was amazing. I liked that commercial. That was one of the few that you're like, oh, man, that's really touching. Yeah. But it's also a company that everyone's sort of pissed off that they own everything and know everything about you. Yeah. And so they're like, well, how do we turn – you can see the Google people like, 
how do we turn the fact that we know everything about everyone into a positive? Into a positive. Oh, yeah. well, here's what we'll do. We'll let's play on dementia. Yay. Yeah. Let's let's make uh, it so that if you forget, you know, everyone in your life, we can help you. Yeah. Piece your life back together because we know everything about you and we won't forget. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, so that was pretty funny. His fucking TV was answering back. It was great. Uh, so that was 2020's commercials for the Soup Bowl. They were pretty cool. Uh, jump online. Let us know what, got, what you think of those. We're going to jump into some of the best Super Bowl commercials that we can remember. And uh, Eric gave us a really good list. I know I had a handful of other ones that I wrote here, but we'll, uh, we'll jump into it. What do you think? What do so, you want to go on? I don't – I know these were commercials, but the Bud Bowl back in the day was one of my favorite things. And I, I had that written down. I don't know it's on here. Technically, it was a commercial. Yeah. But it was like it would go throughout the game, and it was like Budweiser on one side and Bud Light on the other side, and they take the bottles and and make it sort of an animated football game, um, animated not like commercials, but animating the bottles. Um, yeah, sort of there were motion. little bottles running, yeah, moving around with helmets and a football, yeah, and they would play a game, yeah. And I can remember being younger, and they did it over several years, where yeah. like the um, the the. The big bottle, the the, not like a almost like a forty, yeah, would come out. Yeah, he was like because he was supposed to be like the, the fridge. fridge. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember all that shit. It was fun. I forget when they did those. I because I did that was the one I didn't write the year down for, but I can remember being like young, and rooting for Budweiser. You know, I was like, well, that's Budweiser. That's a real one. Ironically, now I never drink Budweiser. I drink Bud Light <laughs> all the time. It's always Bud Light. So. <laughs> I guess I was back in the wrong horse even then. I guess if I was a bet man then, I would have lost too, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so they would go back and forth every year. It was, it was a lot of fun to yep. kind of see that go. It was, like, it was always like either right before or right after it went to commercial. You would see like like every third commercial or some shit like that. You would see like a snippet of the Bud Bowl. The Bud Bowl was a stop-motion animated Super Bowl advertisement campaign first aired in 1989 and sporadically during the 90s. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that was way before I was able to drink. So, yeah. well, not way, but yeah. Uh, on Budweiser, also um, one of my favorite ones has to be the Budweiser Frogs. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, for anyone, who, uh, well, for, for most of you who don't know what the fuck we're talking about, uh, the camera is just kind of like sitting on a, it's panning over a swamp, right? And you see this frog, or you hear frogs first, and they just kind of make a noise, you yeah. know. Rrr, rrr. And then... As the camera pans down to them, they each one of them is there's three of them and they're each making a noise. Yep. And it's like Burr, Burr, I, Burr. Yep. And then it starts to like they start to kind of formulate they sync it up. Yeah. They sync it up until the camera pans around behind them and shows them they're in a lake outside of a bar out in like New Orleans somewhere yep. and they're reading Budweiser and they go Budweiser. Yeah. And that became a thing. Like that Oh, that, that was, was a, one of the ones that, that was, was huge. huge. Yeah, yeah. I can. Remember, that was like one of the first ones I really remember yep. being just like, "Did you see this fucking commercial? It was amazing." Yeah. And looking back now, I mean, like some of the shit they do nowadays, you're like, "It was just three simple frogs sitting yep. on a fucking thing." It was funny though. <coughs> so, how about you? That was huge. Um, those were always great. Um, I remember there was a year of like in the dot in kind of the the first dot com bubble where. Every seemingly every commercial was like a something dot com, and you're like, what do all these things do? And then they all went away. Yeah, y- yeah, yeah. There was yeah, and I, you're right. I still don't know what the fuck they yeah. did. The only one I really remember is GoDaddy dot com, well because it had a couple of hot women. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I I think the most famous, maybe the most famous Super Bowl commercial, um, is Apple's 1984. Yes. That came up on like three or four of my searches, and I want to go back and find out who that blonde was. Yeah. There's a blonde woman running. She's like no, an athlete. Looks like an, an Olympic athlete, and she's running, and it's kind of encapsulating uh, the novel 1984. Or the, the, yeah, the whole thing's very Big Brother. There's a yeah. giant uh, guy, giant talking sort of close-up head. Um, on the screen, talking yeah, about, and yeah. everyone's wearing the same sort of monotone clothing. Yes, exact same outfits. Yeah, it's very from the George Orwell novel. Yes, um, thank you. And then and someone runs in in a. I almost said Orson Welles. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm having senior moments lately. Um, someone comes in and throws what looks like a 
like Thor's hammer almost. Sl- yeah, she chucks a sledgehammer at the screen. Yeah, and breaks it, and everybody's yeah. like, everybody kind of wakes up like, oh. Yeah. And throughout it, the voiceover is talking about how, you know, in 1984, uh, Apple is going to release the Macintosh, mm-hmm. and it's going to revolutionize everything so that society will not be. In 1984, society will not be like 1984 yeah. kind of thing. And that's how it kind of closes out. And ironically, here we are. And the Mac uh, kind of did. We are recording on a Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in my house is Apple. Yep. I mean. All the phones, yeah. watches. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember that commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, almost as well as I remember a certain Pepsi commercial. <laughs> remember? Just one look. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy Crawford pulls up in some random fucking town because she wants a Pepsi. And you see these two kids just staring. Right. Just a hole across the field. They're over by the fence just like gawking. And she walks over to a machine and pulls out a Pepsi and drinks. And as she's drinking, the one kid says to the other, isn't that an awesome new Pepsi can or something like that, right? Right. So the whole time it's like the innocence of kids or whatever because you're – the whole time you're staring at Cindy Crawford like, <laughs> right, holy yep. shit. And it's been parodied by um, James Corbin and whatever. She even helped him do it. it was, yeah. There's been some callbacks to it over the years. But, yeah. that's yeah, it's one of those epic ones. Yeah. Uh, like right up there with uh, Mean Joe Green. Yeah. The co-commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love the I, – I think it was the first time they did this. That Snickers – there's a bunch of guys out playing football and – uh, is I don't know if it's football. It is football. Yeah, and and uh, one of the guys is and, and you see Betty White, and that's when Betty White made a comeback. Yeah, because like she was a golden girl and then she was gone. Yeah, and mind you, she's an old woman running around the field with these guys. Yeah, and she's getting clobbered. Yeah, and she gets laid out. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, "What's wrong? You're playing like an old lady." Yeah, he literally says, "What the hell, Mike? What the hell's wrong with you? You're playing like Betty White out yeah. here." And she's like, get off my back, man. You've been riding my back all day. Yeah. And he's, he's like, you're playing like an old woman. That's not what your mother said. Like, that's <laughs> not what your wife said last night, right? What yeah. the fuck? I mean, Betty White firing back at these guys is great. Yep. And then the girlfriend gives her a Snickers. And turns back into Mike. And, tur- and then, yeah. So basically, the, 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 the whole, and it became a thing. Yeah. They made a bunch oh, of they commercials had like, like a, that. Oh, they had like Abe Vigoda and a Oh, bunch he was of at other... the end of that one. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a whole bunch of other ones like, like that. Where like you're not you when you're hungry, yeah, kind of. So, and it was they a, a, really it was Pesci really was in one of the, Joe Pesci's in one yeah, of those. Yeah. Um, they had a bunch of people. There was a lot of them. I yeah. love those commercials. Yeah. I, I just when they were making those, I was really again. I'm not a huge Snickers fan, but their commercials are amazing. I mean, I like it. I, I, it's just not my go-to candy bar. That's my go-to candy but, bar. Yeah. See. Yeah. We had this conversation on the Halloween episode. Snickers. Go back and check it out. Sponsor us. We'll, we promise to clean up our act. <laughs> he promises. <laughs> He's going to be sitting here trying to clean up a lot of shit. Uh, yeah, but yeah, sponsor us. <clears throat> I'll start eating Snickers all the time. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, so their ads are always amazing. Yeah. I just I love them, and that was one of the best ones. I looked forward to every new one of those. I, they went away, and I'm so sad. It's, it's, it's the place, with the Super Bowl, for all the – the fractured sort of way we watch television now and the way we experience media. And there's not another time in the year where you talk about a commercial in any other form of entertainment. Everything yeah. else, we avoid commercials to the maximum extent possible. You fast possible. forward to them, you, watch, you stream something so you don't have to watch it. You, yeah. you pay extra for services like Hulu and everything else to not get ads in the Ad first free. place. Yeah. You, you, I don't like, I don't pay for Pandora um, Spotify or any of those things, but I'm still pissed off when when ads show up. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm but I'm not willing to pay, you know, another the, couple yes. bucks to get rid of them. Yes, um, I agree with you. I, we we have ads on Hulu, we get ads on uh, Amazon. Do we get ads on Amazon Prime? Uh, other streaming services, we get ads. Um, I don't like it, but I'll I'll get through them if I can. Um, but, I just take my pee break. I'm but, just like, yeah. I get mad. I get mad. Yeah, but no, no other place do we like. Oh, great! The commercials are on. Other than the Super Bowl, it's the only place where we're like, just shows this is you awesome. how fucking stupid we are. But again, yeah. it's because that's when they make their most effort. Yes, because you're paying premium price, so these things cost millions of dollars every yeah. time just to buy that space. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it's cool to watch. Um, we didn't talk about this. when We talked about the other ads, but like 
Coke Energy had a spot with Martin Scorsese and Jonah Hill. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a commercial with Jason Momoa, right? Who takes That's off his amazing. Who takes off his muscles and his hair and his stuff, and he's like a skinny dude. Yeah. Um, uh, Alexa had a commercial with. Oh, I also saw the best meme ever. Ellen and Portia. For that commercial. Sorry for the uh, Momoa one. It shows him when he's first walking in the door with all his muscles and everything, and it said 49ers first quarter. <laughs> and then it shows him sitting there with, like, bald head and whatever yeah. else, and it's like 49ers fourth quarter. Yeah. I was like, wow. Just the, the, the sheer number of, like, celebrity cameos and stars that are willing to be in a commercial. Uh, yeah, just because it's on the Super Bowl. Yeah. Just so your yeah. name is out there. <clears throat> Harrison Ford would be in, you know, Harrison Ford's been in commercials before and does the voice. You're not going to get Harrison Ford for a random commercial. You're not getting Jason Momoa for a random commercial other than no. the Super Bowl. No, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Mo- Momoa seems like a fun guy. <clears throat> I guess you can tell my wife I said that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she thinks he'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um,. Yeah, so going back over a few of these other ones, Eric's got... I mean, I want him to post every one of these to our damn website because they're yeah. great. The Old Spice one, the man you man can smell like. That commercial was hilarious. Do you remember the black guy with the yeah. the um, Scooby-Doo Fred thing? Uh-huh. The, what do you call it? The, not the ascot. Ascom- yeah, yeah. The, the sweater tied around his shirt. It's like, ladies, yeah. look at your man. Now look yeah. at me. Now, now look at your man. Now, now look at me. me. Uh, that was funny as shit. Yeah, uh, yeah that was good. Um, oh, the Volkswagen... The Volkswagen the little Force one. This is one of my favorite yeah. ones. And it's funny. I'm at an age where I'm always... I'm willing to admit when something gets me choked up. You know? That kind of shit. Something about the swelling of the Imperial March right as that kid hits it. And he's mm-hmm. like... He's shocked. Yeah. So for those who haven't seen it, there's this little kid dressed up as Darth Vader. And he's walking around his house the whole commercial trying to use the force on stuff and make it do stuff and nothing's happening. Not right. And you see him not getting the dog, exasperated. Not the door. Yeah. Nothing's moving. Well, his dad pulls up in his new Volkswagen and the kid like runs past him into the driveway mm-hmm. and does a little force hands thing trying to make it do something or whatever. And the car revs up and starts, you know, starts back up and the kid jumps back startled and yeah. looks at his hands. And then like the dad is standing in the kitchen with the mom with the a key fob in his yeah. hand and he just kind of raises his eyebrows at the mom. And, yeah, that one got to me. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And fuck you, Eric. I sat here trying to go through half of these commercials and then going down the rabbit hole with some of these commercials last night, getting all choked up over <laughs> fucking Bud, <laughs> Budweiser Clydesdales. We'll get to them uh. in a few minutes. But, uh, yeah, mm. so a few of these commercials, like, they'll get me. And I'm like, yeah, all right, you know what? I'm, I've been married three fucking times, and now I've been married for, like, 15 fucking years. I'm mad enough to tell you when I'm crying or whatever, you know. I might not let my wife see that shit. But, uh, <laughs> but what's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm going to get a beer. Somebody cut some onions in here? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go kill something. I'll be right, right back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, d- 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 yeah, the, for- the Volkswagen one had me going. Yep. He's got Cindy Crawford there. McDonald's, Larry Bird versus Michael Jordan, the horse oh, showdown. Yeah. That was a classic. And Off the this- building, nothing but net. Yeah. Yeah. Coined a phrase, nothing but net. Yep. That's where nothing but net came from. Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, the Super Bowl about a guy who doesn't know he's in a Super Bowl ad. That was funny as shit. Do you remember that one? I don't. So it's this guy. I forget his name. We'll just call him John Smith, whatever. He, The commercial starts with basically like they've got a hidden camera, and the dude sits down like he's like meeting a girl at a bar or whatever, like a speed dating kind of thing. And he's like, hey, how you doing? I'm John. And she's like, hi, you know, Becca, whatever, you know. And she's like, all right, serious. If... I give you this beer, and he's, she's got a Bud Light in her hand. She's like, if I give you this beer, you pr- basically it's like uh, she says something like, "You promise to just go with whatever happens," you know. And he was like, "Yeah," which again, I mean, she's hot, so I would have said yeah too. And they go on this epic fucking thing throughout this commercial. It's and that's another one of those that's like continuous throughout the Super Bowl okay. where they cut back to it, and he's got no idea he's in a Super Bowl ad, but it winds up like starts up with her. And she takes him in a limo, and there's a DJ, and there's whatever, and everybody's, like, partying, this and that, whatever. And they show up somewhere else, and uh, I forget who the fuck it was, but they get in an elevator going somewhere, and the door opens up, and some famous star walks in with a fucking llama into the damn elevator. And the guy's just like, 
whatever. <laughs> but then the girl that he's talking to, she's a twin. Right. Her twin walks on with the guy too, and he's like, "Wait, wait you're twins?" <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah." And like, kind of like it's this whole thing is this whole thing that like the night got crazier and crazier for this fucking guy. Yeah. To when the elevator gets up to wherever the fuck it's going, he walks into a room, and Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger is standing there in like tennis gear, and he's like. I'm going to play you in table tennis. <laughs> and this guy's like, what the fuck is going on? And he plays him. Right. And he beats him. Right. And then the whole wall drops down, and there's an entire stadium of fucking people there just waiting for this shit to happen. Oh, that's funny. And Yeah, and it's one big Bud Light commercial. I don't know why I don't remember that. Oh, we got to watch it later. I mean, he had it here. You didn't do your homework. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was epic. It was, it was funny. I mean, in order to pull that off, because I always, like, you know, looking back, I'm like... Of course, it, it was just staged, whatever. Yeah. But in order to pull it off, it, it looked really good. Right. When you watch it, you're like, it's fucking amazing. Uh, what else? How about you? Uh, all of the Clydesdale, <coughs> I think when Budweiser started doing the Clydesdale commercials are the ones that um, I think really, they they do really well. Um, the one with the, where the Clydesdale uh, and the dog, the puppy, right? Yeah. When they meet as, yeah. well, like, he's, the... a, he's a cult uh, pony, whatever, um, and the do- and then they meet each other later. Yeah, well, there's one that there's two. Well, actually, no, because I watched like three or four of them last night. There's a bunch of them that really stuck out to me. So just Google Budweiser Clydesdale commercials and mm-hmm. get ready to cry because yeah. uh, they do it all the time. But two of the biggest ones that really hit me were uh, hang on, I got it here. In 2011, they did a 9/11 tribute. Oh yeah, do you remember that one? Yeah. And all it was was you see the Clydesdales getting dressed out, hooked up to the wagon, and the guy's going. And you start to see, like, little screen uh, or shots from, from I guess, from the trailer or wherever, where they're, like, they show people, like, looking out their businesses and homes mm-hmm. at these horses coming in. And they go all the way out to <clears throat> a field where they can see New York City and the horses take a knee. Yeah. And... I was done. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's it. I'm crying. But then the puppy love one is, I think, kind of the one you're talking about. But the one that I saw that really hits you, and actually it was funny because Heather saw it uh, about two weeks ago, so shortly after she had her surgery, she had her estrogen patch on, and she was like, fucking Budweiser commercials. <laughs> she's mad, just crying. Uh, this dude has a puppy, and he's also raising Clydesdales, yep. whatever you know. And... The They're dog, together the, on a farm. Yes, yeah. and the puppy accidentally gets stuck in the way, in the horse trailer and gets out, but he's out in like the middle of nowhere. So he's trying to make his way home, and the song is playing, and all this other bullshit. And the guy's like ho- holding or hanging up like lost dog signs all over, you know. So he's all brokenhearted. And then you see the dog. He's a little bit bigger, but he's still a puppy. But he's almost home, and there's a, a bunch of wolves come out of the woods. And it looks like, all right, yeah, you're done. Yeah. And the Clydesdales all break out from inside the barn and surround the dog. So all the wolves run away. Right. Yeah. I'm getting choked up just thinking about it. The, uh, <laughs> the one that's not on Eric's list, but that I remember it's from a couple of years ago, it's 2013. The, uh, the, <coughs> the Ram truck, So God Made a Farmer. I don't remember that one at all. Um, it's, uh, it's from essentially a Paul Harvey uh, radio. Paul Harvey's a very famous radio broadcaster from like yeah. our parents' um, age, and and he has this um, poem essentially, and and this speech about a farmer. Okay, and wait. it ends with and it ends with so God created a farmer, and it's it's yes. all these like really cool shots of of people out working, and and it's uh that's that's one that got me. Yeah. Okay. I. Th- I think I remember the commercial now, but yeah, yeah, I remember the the poem. Yeah, so yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I guess outside of the the sappy shit, so we can end her on a a little bit more of a high note. A couple of random ones that I had were um, the Hulk and Ant Man co commercial, right as uh, like the after the the Avengers and Ant Man all yeah. played, where he's running through Ant Man's running around with a little mini can, Hulk uh-huh. is chasing him. That was funny. Um. The Bud Light Magic Fridge one. Do you remember that one? So this dude 
is getting ready for a party or whatever, or he's doing whatever he's doing, and he's stocked. He's got a fridge stocked mm. full of Bud Light, right? right? And his buddy's like, "Man, aren't you worried about like everybody drinking it when they get over here, like before everything starts?" And he goes, "No, look," and he pulls something off the wall, like a book or whatever, and the fridge flips. Right? So he's got like a a false wall, right? But he's in an apartment. Right. Cause so, because it cuts, it goes like he sh- it shows the fridge flipping. It's like Bud Light. And then when it flips, he's, it comes he's back, and Bud there's Light. guys on the other side yeah. of the wall from the, in the apartment next door, and they're like, Guys, the magic fridge is back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The magic fridge is back. And it was about the funniest fucking thing I'd seen yeah. forever. Um, do you remember the, um, the Mountain Dew commercial with Puppy Monkey Baby? Yes, that was so weird. Yeah. So weird, but it was, it was so fucking yeah. funny. Speaking of puppies, the Doritos, the pug life. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that one? Yeah. When the dude is teasing the pug from outside uh-huh. the fucking thing, and she's like, <laughs> don't hurt my dog. And this fucking pug comes flying through the fucking door. It, yeah. And almost kills this dude. Oh, my God. And I think, like, the last one I got. Do you have any other ones? Um, No. All right. The last one I have, and it was a series of them back in uh, 2003. It was by Reebok. It was the Terry Tate office linebacker. All right, we're back. So now, now that Paul's been reminded that he has seen the Terry Tate ones, fuck those oh, are man, amazing. That's funny. The first time you ever see that, you're like, "What in the fuck just yeah. happened?" And again, it's one of those, um, you know, memory is a funny thing. It kind of like just comes and goes. Uh, you have like for me, and I've heard somebody else just say this recently. They only have like little snippets and like photographs in their head until somebody says something, and then they're like. Oh yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. Like the, <laughs> I forget what it was that we were talking about, but the guy was like, "Yeah, my mother said whatever," and he was like, "Legit, that dude was not in my head at all, ever, until you said his name." Yeah, like, oh yeah, I remember him. You know, Doctor So and So, whatever. That's how I am. And when I walked, to, I was reviewing Super Bowl commercials. This popped up. I was like, "How the fuck did I That's forget hysterical. this?" Yeah, I, I remember seeing it. The- not all of them, like some of the. Uh, I think some I watched of the a, ones that yeah you watched a bit, I watched like, like a five minute video yeah a yeah. five minute video of them but the the one with the coffee where he's like you can't break that weekend stuff in here yeah my, just my favorite yeah. ones you know game time pain time woo yep. <laughs> he's just fucking tackling people throwing them into cubicles yeah when the one dude's on the other side just like trying to do his work yeah. he's like drinking his all coffee the stuff and comes off his bookshelf yeah. yeah fucking amazing so it'll be I'm sure Eric Link Terry Tate. Um, so yeah, that, that was the last one that I remembered. Um, that's all I got for these commercials. I'm sure there are others that, that if we saw them again or did a longer search, we'd be like, Oh, I remember that. Yeah. But, but I think we've hit the highlights in terms of like the really memorable ones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Britney Spears, Pepsi is always good. I mean, <laughs> who doesn't like that? Yep. But yeah. Uh, so let us know what you guys think as far as what your favorite commercials were for the Super Bowl, uh, for this year and for all time. Oh, that was my cat. I heard the door open and close, <laughs> and here she comes. She's coming to hang out. All right, uh, let us know. Hit us up on whatifgeeks.com, uh, whatifgeeks at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that happy shit. And I guess we will see you next week, but we will see you again next year after the other big game. Yay. Good night, Tony. Good night, Shakira. <laughs>